When working with 3D shapes, you are often asked to calculate the volume of that shape. You'll be given some measurements of that shape and asked to use the formula to calculate the volume. But sometimes you'll be asked to go backwards, like in this one. You're told that the volume of this cone is 174.4 cubic meters. You're told that the radius is 4.4 meters. What would the height have to be? So in this video, I'd like to show you a couple of ways that you can do that. Both ways start with the formula, that the volume of a cone is equal to one-third times pi times the radius squared times the height. So let's start by taking these two numbers that we are given and putting them into that formula. Volume is 174.4. That's equal to one-third times pi times the radius squared. The radius is 4.4 radius squared times the height. And one thing I didn't mention is let's take our final height and let's round to the nearest tenth, like the other two numbers are. So we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. Uh, this first way has a little flaw in it, uh, but it usually gets you a good number if you're careful. Uh, but the reason I'm going to show you this one first is after teaching this to my students, I found that this way is the one that makes the most sense for them and has the most success. So what I've got here is I've got the volume is equal to these four terms all multiplied together. One third times pi times 4.4 squared times h. And what I can do is let's simplify this down. What is one third times pi times 4.4 squared? So let's do that as our first step. So I'm going to have 174.4 is equal to those three things multiplied together times h. Let's see what those three things are. So on my calculator, I'm going to do one third. I'm just going to do one divided by three is my one third times pi, I'm going to use the pi key, I could use 3.14, but I'll use the pi key, times 4.4 squared equals, and I've got 20.27. So this is 20.27 times h. Notice I rounded to the nearest hundredth place. The flaw in this method is there's uh, I have to round my answers a few times before I get to my final answer. And the more times you round, uh, there's a greater chance that your final answer might be uh, a little bit off. So I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth instead of nearest tenth, and hopefully that will uh, minimize that problem. So now I have 174.4 times 20.27 times the height. How do I solve for the height? Instead of multiplying the height by 20.27, let's divide this side by 20.27. And now 20.27 divided by 20.27 is just 1, leaving h all by itself on the right side. But if I divide the right by 20.27, I need to divide the left by 20.27. And when I do, I'm going to have 174.4 divided by 20.27 and that is equal to 8.60 which I will then round to the nearest tenth which is just 8.6. So I'm going to say 8.6 and these measurements are in meters. So the height of this cone given this radius and this volume must be 8.6 meters. Another way I'm going to show you that kind of that eliminates that uh, rounding error problem. Let's rewrite the problem. 174.4 is equal to one-third times pi times 4.4 squared times the height. Instead of multiplying all of these together and writing my number here, let's just do this in one quick step. Let's just immediately divide this side by one-third times pi times 4.4 squared. The benefit is one-third divided by one-third is one, it cancels away. Pi divided by pi cancels. 4.4 squared divided by 4.4 squared is just one, it cancels, again leaving me with just h on the right hand side. But here's where you have to be careful. If I divide all of this on the right by one-third times pi times 4.4 squared, I'm going to divide the left by one-third times pi times 4.4 squared. But you have to be careful. 
if you just enter it into the calculator like this, it's going to possibly give you the wrong answer. So you need to be careful either to divide each of these into 174.4 separately or group them together with parentheses, which is what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to now do 174.4 divided by, and I'm going to put parentheses around it. And now I'm going to do 1 third, 1 divided by 3, times pi times 4.4 squared. I'm going to close the parentheses around it. In this way, the calculator is going to multiply all of these together first, and then divide that number into my 174.4, and I get 8.6. To the nearest tenth, 8.6. I like this way because it eliminates that extra rounding in the middle of the problem, uh, except when I've taught this to students, this step here just kind of confuses them. They aren't quite sure what they're doing, unfortunately, um, and they don't understand this what they're doing here as well as what they're doing up here. But either way, if you're careful, either way we'll get you the right answer, uh, and I hope this helps when you are solving these problems about cones.